Hey, everybody. Frank DiLorenzo with Preferred Strategies. Wrong side, Preferred Strategies. Uh, here to talk about data. We've got 15 minutes together. Um, I don't know if anybody saw, but it looks like the Mega Millions is up to the Mega Billions. So I'm going to use all my data analytics prowess and BI Power BI skills to see if I can uh, increase my chances of winning. We'll see. Stay tuned. If I show up to work, you'll know. No, I'd show up in either way. Morning, Tyler. Morning, Jill. Morning, Monica. Morning, Joe, I believe I saw out there. How was everybody doing? All right. So last time we met, we had some good questions. And over this last week in meeting with some uh, potential clients, uh, we've had some other really pretty good questions. I thought I would um, kind of pose to the platform. Hey, Bob, how you doing? It's good to see you. Hope things are going well over there. Um, one of the questions that we received, interestingly, what is the difference between business intelligence and data analytics? It's a good question. And the answer might surprise you because I wrote it down. Business intelligence refers to the information required to enhance business decision-making activities, but data analytics refers to modifying the raw data into a meaningful format. Now that makes sense. Hard to really do some uh, great data, vi data visualizations and, and use a tool like Power BI, <clears throat> excuse me, if your data is not modified from the kind of raw transactional format into something that's reporting but reporting friendly. Hello, Ben. Hello, Adam. <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So um, hopefully that makes sense. And we had another good question I wrote down from the other day, which was, Ah, this is a good one. So how do we pull data out of the database? How do we how do we do that? And I was talking to a client who runs a lot of crystal reports. And um, when they run some reports, it's a noticeable degradation in the um, in the production system speed in the processing. I think it was particularly around payroll. And uh, that's a good point. It does make sense when you're just writing reports that are taxing the production database. It can be a hit on two things performance and the speed of that report we produced. But um, uh, if you set up a proper data model and transform the data, so basically transactional database, you have a data model where you're dripping the data in and transforming it at that same time into a reporting database. And that's what you're driving the reports off of. Far better performance, doesn't tax the production system, and uh, allows you to self-service your reporting needs because now it's easy to use. Let's see if we have anything else out there. Morning. It's good to see everybody. Okay. Ah, security. This comes up a lot. Can I restrict people from certain modules? The cool thing depends on how you set it up. Power BI has some security uh, capabilities, certainly. But for example, the, the model that we deliver, we call a quick launch, um, it can mirror your ERP and mind you, we have uh, data models built for Viewpoint, J.D. Edwards, where we started, uh, NetSuite, and Salesforce. So in the ERPs, for example, uh, the, the security that you have set up in your ERP, so I'll take uh, Viewpoint because I know that one pretty well. You might have job security, company security, uh, contract security. Um, that can be mirrored in the, in the model. But the cool thing with uh, at least how Quick Launch is designed we can do security by every row and column of data. So you really want to get granular with who can see what. Uh, that is absolutely something that um, that you can do. So like the security question. And let's see if we have anything else. OK, so I'm just curious, everybody on the call, uh, maybe just in the comments, you can put a one for, or yes or no, one for yes. <laughs> like we're using just um, uh, zeros and ones suddenly now. Um, how many use Power BI today? You just put a yes in the comments. Just curious to get a feel. Or a no, if it's no. No. 
Okay. How many are going to uh, participate in the billion dollar lottery then? Let me ask that. In hopes that it changes the uh, career choices. We have a one. We have a yes. Okay, a one. Where's your sales force? Oh, hey. I'm going to show this one. This is a good question. See if that works. So I'm struggling with how to visualize marketing data for marketing data. Sorry for clients, specifically clients who use Salesforce. Can Quick Launch do that? Short answer: Absolutely. Longer answer: Yes, absolutely. Certainly can. Um, it looks like almost everybody's using Power BI. That's great. Uh, Tyler, love the question about uh, marketing. Uh, I can tell you at our team, Bird Strategies, we use uh, Salesforce. And so uh, data doesn't lie. It's hard to hide. You see, I call myself Frank Data Di Lorenzo for a reason. Uh, anything forecasted in Salesforce, uh, predicted, upcoming, we visualize very well. So um, for both sales and marketing activities, uh, Power BI can really help you look for outliers and trends to, to make more you know, real-time decisions on your, your marketing spend and so forth. Hopefully that, uh, that makes resonates with you. With everybody using Power BI, let me ask, I'm curious, what, what's your favorite kind of aspect of Power BI? Is it visualizing data? Is it the ease to create your own content? Is it the fact that you can take it wherever you go on a device like this? It looks like I could use a new device, by the way. Maybe I'll hit that, that lottery and buy myself a phone. Any thoughts out there on that? Okay. All right. Nothing yet. But I will tell you, for me, if uh, uh, this means anything out there, but I um, what I love with Power BI is I can quickly, particularly if the data is transformed like we're talking about, again, through the um, lens of Quick Launch, I can take a system like J.D. Edwards where the data literally looks like hieroglyphics. It's MCU01 and F011 tables and and things like that. I don't know what that means, but I know what a business unit is, or I know what a department is, and I know what a budget and a cost is. So once the data is transformed, I can easily create my own masterpiece on the blank canvas uh, with a few extra clicks, truly make it mobile. And then if I really you know, have something I need right at my fingertips, literally, or, or wrist, I can you know, keep the KPIs on my uh, Apple Watch. So that's one thing I like about it, ease of use. And when you visualize data, you will see trends you never knew are right in front of you. It is a great first step for companies looking to move to the cloud. I love some of these things. How do you add other data sources beyond Vista? That's a great question. Um, or beyond any of the solutions. So Vista will use as an example. Could be J.D. Edwards. Uh, about 80% of our clients do this, by the way. Rarely do our clients live in a vacuum and just have one system for the entire business. So you might have your ERP, I'll use Viewpoint again, but maybe you've got estimating on-prem while Viewpoint's in the cloud and you're subscribing to Procore, which is in their cloud. How do you take all this data? Well, Quick Launch provides, it's really kind of neat. It provides a platform, if you will, that all that data is dripped in, formatted. So by the time I, as an end user, a business user, get to the data, I don't need to know the source. I don't need to know uh, look up and a sums and join formulas. Well, all I need to know is I need that estimate. I need that actual. I need it through this date and I need it by these segments. Um, dimensions could be project, project manager, division, job type, you name it. The list goes on. And that's what I want to look at. And I can create that myself. It really reduces or dare I say eliminates the reporting reliance on IT. I think that's a fantastic thing. And the fact that you can access the data anywhere. What I tell a lot of my clients and love working with them and getting this stuff set up. But if you're walking into a, a meeting, customer site, vendor site, warehouse, job site, makes no matter, JDE, Viewpoint, NetSuite, Salesforce, whatever your database, and you don't have access to some critical information that you need at your fingertips, i.e. as you're walking in, just looking on your mobile, uh, it's a missed opportunity. It, it, it's not that the technology is coming, it's here. And it's uh, very affordable to deploy. Hey, Joe. Joe on the go. Good to see you out there, Joe. Hope everything's well. Don't stump me now. Joe has some good questions sometimes, so we'll see. 
Hmm. Another question I received this week that may interest some of you out there is, particularly with J.D. Edwards and, and Viewpoint, I know those pretty well, they allow you to have custom fields and custom tables. Let me ask a question out there. How valuable is a custom field if I can't report on it? If I can't slice and dice by it or use it to filter data, it's probably just a static data that's just sitting there and rarely used, and that's not really effective. So if we um, have custom tables, custom fields in our ERP, we bring that into the data model just like other fields for reporting. And uh, so that's one to know. Good one. And I'll show this one. But a bing, but a boom. Can you be on prem and still use Power BI? Yes, you can. Most of our clients, I say, would, or I would say now, are deploying in uh, the Microsoft Azure Power BI Premium environment. But we definitely have a lot of clients um, that still enjoy using Power BI through a tabular model, uh, SQL uh, Server on prem. So you can absolutely do that. And your ERP could be on prem or in the cloud, by the way, as well. Loving these questions. This is getting fun. You know, we should do this every week. In fact, I think we will. Hopefully, uh, we'll be seeing more folks out there. Uh, let me see if other questions that I've received. I had a few notes to myself. Okay. Refresh. Yep. This came up last week, actually. Uh, how often is the data refreshed? Because I mentioned we're dripping the data out into a reporting database and transforming it. Is that a day old? And you got to look into that because some systems they have once a day refresh. That's it. Well, again, the way we set it up, we, we've gotten pretty good at this. And not not to sound arrogant, but it's all we do. If you do one thing, you better do it pretty well. So we've gotten a lot of this figured out. But uh, we can partition and uh, segment the database in a way where, let's take General Ledger. Your history file might have changed daily, maybe even not but once a month, at month end or something, you could say refresh the history every 24 hours. But your transactions are near real time. So refresh that every 15, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. So in effect, we get what we call very near real time reporting off source data, right? So you can trust in the data. So you're getting data governance, strong security, access at your fingertips, and data formatted in a manner uh, that can be really useful to you. And one of our clients, uh, it's a gentleman at Granite Construction, actually. I loved he spoke at the CFMA National. And one thing he had shared, I may have said this last week, but um, it's worth repeating. He had shared that uh, through the looking at the data through Power BI, his equipment managers operate more like mini controllers. And he, as a controller, feels like a mini equipment manager. And he went further to say that when they were looking at spreadsheet, to, you know, row column type reports, a lot of things would slide right through, would get missed. But he said, when they see that big gauge that's, you know, green, yellow, red, something's in the red, it gets an immediate attention. So I thought that was really impactful. Okay. Let's see what else we have. So, yeah, that was exciting. And the other thing he said, which is just great, we hear this a lot from clients, actually, and very, very proud of this, that certain processes, in their case, a financial month-end close around jobs specifically, was a 40-hour uh, at the end of the month process and have it down to one hour. And that's the impact having, you know, access to accurate data formatted the way you need it really can have. All right. We should be at this about five minutes, probably have 10 minutes left. Let me check. Wow. That was the fastest 14 minutes uh, I've seen go by. So we have another minute. Let's see if anything else out there. <laughs> Someone's going after that lottery money. Good for you. I hope. I hope you win unless we win. How's that? Is that fair? We have other data sources, access data from anywhere. So again, to summarize what we're talking about today, we talked a little bit about the difference between business intelligence, data analytics, the importance of transforming data into a model. And uh, we'll be back to talk more next week. So I really encourage you to join us at that time. And I will hope to see you there. Everybody have a great day. This is Frank Data DeLorenzo signing off. Goodbye.